Are you tired of typing commands all the time in terminal to manage your Linux server? Or using command line is still the single scariest thing which stops you from setting up your own server at home? Look no further. Today's video, I'm going to take a look at Embryo. A Linux tool has generated a lot of heat in the Linux community lately because it provides an app store and a UI layer on top of the traditional Linux servers. It looks like you finally don't have to copy and paste those annoying commands to the terminal anymore. Yes. I will try to see if it can truly live up to all the hypes that anyone can install and use without any tinkering. I hope at the end of this video, you are confident enough to store all your documents and photos at home without paying Google, Apple, or Microsoft who can see whatever you are sharing with your girlfriend 24 seven. Before we go ahead and start tinkering, I want some help from you. If you enjoy my channel, please like the video and subscribe, which will help me massively. I'm constantly learning how to make my video better to help more people fall in love with Linux. Your help can be my daily motivation. Enough said, let's dig in. Let's start with what Ember is. It is a web service platform, which can be installed on any Ubuntu or Debian based distribution. To be more specific, once you set it up, there is a website you can access from any device at home. You can install applications using the App Store, all of which are open source tools helpful for you and your family. I will show you two of them in this video. The first one being Pyho. You can set it up once and forget about it. You will filter a lot of advertisements you see online on any device connecting to the same Wi-Fi. I am using a free version teleprompter app on my phone, which contains ads. Usually I have to get the paid version to get rid of them. But when I'm at home, I no longer need to pay anyone to remove them. The second is called Nextcloud. It is an alternative to replace Google Drive. Google Docs, iCloud, Microsoft OneDrive, and Microsoft Online Office. It can store, share documents, collaborate with others, and if you have a big enough storage on your server, you can back up all your photos from your phone and share them with your family without worrying about paying for subscriptions to those big tech companies. I picked these two to start with because I want to see if Embryo is really that easy to use for people without any self-hosting experience. But if you do, don't limit yourself. Embryo has a lot more to offer. Take a look at all the apps on their website. To install Embryo, you only need to use this single line of command on a Debian or Ubuntu-based system. The exception is Raspberry Pi which you need to burn the system to the SD card. The most accessible Debian system to me when I started recording this video was the virtual machine running in the Chrome OS Flex on this gaming laptop for the last video. So I was thinking, huh, any Debian system including virtual machines would work, right? Let's see then. Well, it worked, but only partially. The installation finished successfully within about three minutes. But there are several issues. First, the Debian is using a virtual network interface, so the IP address can only be accessed from the host OS. I cannot see it from any other devices in the same network without tinkering. Second, I mentioned in my video that this laptop was running hot under very light load on Flex. It was literally burning my hand when Umbro was running. I was seriously worried about the health of this laptop and of course my hand. Thirdly, it crashes from time to time. I checked that Embryo was only using 7 megabytes of RAM, so I was frustrated about how it can crash with this little usage. I realized after I set it up on the other machine that Embryo is probably limiting itself to use about one eighth of the system memory. I make this assumption because it is taking about one gigabyte of RAM from this eight gigabyte mini PC. Which means the Debian on Chrome OS didn't have a whole lot of RAMs to begin with, so Embryo ended up dragging the whole system down. I didn't spend much more effort tweaking it after that because this video is made targeting new users. I chose to install the Ubuntu Server Edition on this mini PC next. The rest of the screenshots are from this one, but I'm assuming they're still representable if you're using Ubuntu Desktop. Nothing changed about the Ambro installation here. 
it is exactly the same as it was on the Chrome OS Flex. It will give you a link after installation. Following the link was the user creation screen, username, password, and boom, I'm in. I don't remember using anything this easy to set up. I don't have to worry about validating my email, giving out my phone number, or using different disk types for partitioning, or backing up anything ahead of time. I was able to start using it right then and there. Installing and removing applications are quite intuitive as well. It is exactly what you think it is. The same process you'll find on any smartphone. Using the App Store to install applications and click on Manage Apps to remove them. Let me now show you how to set up Pi-hole. If you're running Debian, you don't have to worry about anything when installing it. But there are things to look out for on Ubuntu. You may encounter the issue that the installation is stuck and wouldn't complete. That is probably because Ubuntu is by default using a service called systemd resolve, which takes up the port 53, and Pi-hole also wants to use it. To solve that, you need to change the content of a system file, make a symbolic link, and restart your system. Check out the description below to learn more. After the installation, copy the default password from the App Store page, open the application, Click on the link to go to the admin panel. Click on login and paste the password. Here you will see a dashboard. It will show you all the websites everyone is accessing on your network. You will have the power to block any website you don't want people to have the access to or whitelist anything you like. But before that, remember to change the default password in the setting and hit the like button. You also need to modify something on your router to make it work. Log into your router and find the LAN setting. In one of the subtabs here, you should be able to find an option called DNS server, which is usually under DHCP section. Change this field to the IP address of your Umbro server. It should be the same set of number you are using to access your Umbro server on your browser. You will be able to see the ads getting filtered after reconnecting your device to your internet. The next application is called Nextcloud. There are some Roblox tools after the installation before you can use it. First, if you're accessing it from a different machine's browser by clicking on the application itself, you will complain about that you're using an untrusted domain. To fix it, you have to SSH into the server and type in some commands yourself. And again, please see the detail in the description below. Second, be aware. These kinds of free software are not so convenient to use compared to those commercial ones. Usually, it means you have to set it up somehow to suit your own need. Because freedom always comes with a cost, right? In order to edit Word document, you can do either of these two things to begin with. If you're using Linux and have LibreOffice installed, you can use that to edit any files on Nextcloud. You can do so by going to the apps from the user icon dropdown search for office and install edit files with LibreOffice. Now, if you click on the file option button, you will see LibreOffice there. You will open up the local LibreOffice for editing your files. You can also edit documents directly inside the browser by searching for Collabora in the app section. Install built-in server and point to it in the Collabora settings. You will be a little bit slower than the native application but at least the experience will be on par with other online document editors. They also have the integration with Microsoft Online Office. I didn't try it because it makes the whole effort of tinkering this down the drain, but feel free to try and let everyone know how it goes in the comment down below. Let's have the verdict now. Is the system worth all the public attention? Yes, it is way better than the traditional way of self-hosting services. It is definitely a step in the right direction. I remembered using a lot of courage and more than half a day just to set up the Pi hole correctly on my Raspberry Pi 4, along with WildGuard for the first time ever. It is so much better to have a UI, especially for the new users. But speaking of new users, is Embryo really ready for them now? Not exactly. First, it is still in beta. It only supports two distributions at this moment. And it really needs work when running on VMs. The biggest thing for me is that users cannot really just install applications or start using them. I was planning to showcase three applications in this video. The third one being the Matrix chat server. 
I thought it would be a pain-free experience with the UI, given that I do have previous experience with setting up both Pi-hole and Nextcloud just using Terminal. But it turned out that having a UI took me more time to debug than it used to be because the UI doesn't show a lot of helpful information by default. I was waiting about 10 minutes only to realize that Pi-hole installation was stuck. And if I didn't know that Embryo is using Docker underneath, or which community post is correct for me to solve the untrusted domain issue on Nextcloud within seconds. It would take me so much longer to make this video, and you'll probably end up with me showing only how to install Embryo, which I bet is not useful for anyone other than taking me a whole week on planning it. So I definitely don't recommend it to anyone who is new and wants to have a simple life with it. And that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.